Hello, I am Seamus Dunhu of EVE University, and this is a video about attributes, remaps, and the 2011 holiday gift choice made available to you by Crowd Control Productions. This video assumes that you skipped my first video on the subject, which the annotation should say that you should be skipping, because this video is 100% more awesome than the first video, according to some arbitrary, undefinable measure that my fellow engineers would rightly have me crucified for for trying to use in any sort of serious professional capacity. Where was I? Right! Remaps. So, skill training is the single slowest process in EVE Online. For example, if I open my training queue, uh, let me close these things, you can see that uh, I right now I am training Mimitar Cruiser up to level 5. And it's going to take 13 days. Skill training is a background process. As long as you have a skill set up and it's in training, you're going to accumulate skill points in that skill uh, while you're logged on or while you're logged off. All right, regardless of what you're doing. So, given that this is a very slow process, I mean, there are players in EVE Online who have been playing since day one, and they, they still haven't trained all the skills up to level five. Uh, some calculations say it would take up to 20 real years to train every single skill in the game up to level five. Right? So, you're going to be training skills in the background for as long as you're going to be playing this game. So, given that it's such a long, slow process. It's worth no understanding just how long it takes to do that. First of all, you should understand the difference between the level and the rank of a skill. So, higher level uh, means that the skill provides you with more benefit. Higher rank means that it takes longer to train. So, for example, if I look at Spaceship Command, that says 1x in parentheses right next to the name Spaceship Command. So it's a rank 1 skill. It takes a total of 256,000 skill points put into it to get it up to level 5. A rank 2 skill, such as Galente Frigate, takes twice as many skill points to get it up to level 5, the, or 512,000 skill points. Minmatar Cruiser is a rank 5 skill, so it's going to take five times as many skill points as Spaceship Command. So that's going to take 1.28 million skill points to get it up from level 0 to level 5. So how many skill points do you generate per unit time? Let's show info on Minmatar Cruiser. And if we look at the Attributes tab, we see that Minmatar Cruiser says that it has a primary attribute of perception and a secondary attribute of willpower. What does that mean? Well, first of all, let me drag this aside for a moment. And if we go to the character sheet, the attributes section, we see that I have five attributes. All characters, all player characters in EVE Online have five attributes. Intelligence, Perception, Charisma, Willpower, and Memory. And these attributes determine how quickly the various different kinds of skills will train. So Minmatar Cruiser has a primary of perception and a secondary of willpower. The higher the attributes, the better. And the equation is that you get as many skill points per minute in the skill you're training right now as your primary plus one half your secondary. So my primary is perception, that's 32 points. My secondary is willpower, that's 25 points. So if I grab a calculator, and for this one, I'll use the Neocomps calculator. So 25 divided by 2 is 12.5. You know what? This calculator's font is too small. Let me use the Macintosh calculator. So willpower is 25, divided by 2 is 12.5. I add the perception, that's 32. So 32 plus half of 25 is 44.5. So every minute, I'm generating 44 and a half skill points in Minmatar Cruiser. That's going to be 2,670 skill points per hour, 64,080 skill points per day. Now, if I were training a whole bunch of things that were perception willpower, which 
basically means stuff in gunnery, stuff in missile launcher operations, stuff in the spatial command category. Uh, and I were trading perception willpower stuff for a year, I would be generating mm, almost 23.4 million skill points per year. If I suddenly decided that I wanted to go into capital ships, then I would need to train stuff in the navigation category because capital ships have jump drives and one of the prerequisites of jump drives is warp drive operation. There are also some other skills in navigation that are involved in jump drives. If we show info on warp drive operation, that is a primary attribute of intelligence and a secondary attribute of perception. Let me go to the character sheet skills section. Let me open up the navigation. The navigation group, that is. And the skills for jump drives... Jump drive calibration is also intelligence perception. Jump drive operation is intelligence perception. Jump fuel conservation is intelligence perception. So if I wanted to use anything that had a jump drive, I'd have to train all these intelligence perception skills. The problem is, right now, I've got 32 perception, 25 willpower, but my intelligence is only 17. So if I suddenly switch to these navigation skills, then my skill points per minute would become, let's see, one half of my perception is 16. Add the intelligence, that's 17, that brings it up to 33. So, where I'm training perception willpower stuff at 44.5 skill points per minute, I'm only training, I would only train intelligence perception stuff at 33 skill points per minute. That's a lot slower. Uh, 60 times 24. Uh, I don't think there's a year's worth of navigation skills, but let's say for the sake of argument. So, I would only be training 17.4 million points worth of navigation stuff uh, in a year. Like I said, though, I don't think there's that many navigation skills. So you'd, it'd take less than a year to train them all up to level 5, I think. Alright, so your attributes determine how quickly you train skills in the various categories. If you want to focus on your tanking skills, that's going to fall under the engineering and the mechanics categories. The electronic warfare stuff and science also uh, fall under intelligence memory. So those are all intelligence memory. Uh, if you want to fly bigger ships or, and use bigger weapons, you're going to need stuff in Spaceship Command, Gunnery, Missile Launcher Operation, that's mostly perception willpower. Though some of the more specialized Spaceship Command skills are willpower perception instead. Uh, if you want to use drones a lot, like I do, uh, you'd want, uh, ideally, memory perception. Because okay? a lot of this drone stuff is memory perception. So the attributes determine how quickly you train skills. You can change your attribute layout. And that's done by clicking the Remap Now button. Now you can safely click this button. Don't click Save Changes until you know what you're doing. But the way this window works, everybody has a base of 17 in all five attributes. This can be further increased by the implants that you have plugged in your head, which you can review in the augmentation section. But I'm not going to cover implants in this video, so let's go back to attributes. You have 14 attribute points that are remappable. You can click somewhere in the bar to change uh, how much. So if I wanted to focus on navigation stuff, I could uh, remove everything and put as much as possible into intelligence and the remainder into perception, if I wanted to. You can adjust up or down by one unit by one point at a time by clicking the minus or plus buttons at the end of the bar. And the neural remapping window will tell you what your totals are going to come out to be after the remap. Now, if you're conf... Here's the thing about neural remaps, though. Normally, if you don't have a remap available, it's on a one-year cooldown. Right? So once you've used your last remap, you have to wait an entire real year before you can change these attributes. So if you spend these remaps foolishly, uh, 
you're going to be stuck with a bad attribute map for the next year. And you're going to be training skills very slowly as a result over that year, and there's nothing you can do to change it normally. Now, uh, a new character does start off with extra remaps, besides the remap that's available on the one-year cooldown. Uh, this is the old remapping interface. Uh, CCP is going to change this in the very near future because they're, they've recently changed the code as to how the extra remaps work. If I understand the dev blogs correctly, and let me take a look at one of the dev, the dev blog in question. Quote, We rearranged the code a little and decoupled bonus remaps from the timed ones so that when you use a bonus remap, it will not mess with your timer. Unquote. All right. What that means is you have your remaps are now separated into two categories. You've got the timed remap that only comes once a year, and you've got the bonus remaps, which you might get because of CCP uh, reimbursements for severe server-side glitches that affect the entire player base, or because they're handing out bonus remaps as gifts, like, say, for Christmas, which is the next part of this video. Right. So, if both bonus remaps and a timed remap are available, the game will preferentially use the timed remap and start the one-year cooldown, leaving your bonus remaps alone. Most of the time, you're probably just going to want to use one year long skill plans. You'll set an attribute map on this screen uh, to something that you're happy with. Like, say, for example, right now I'm Perception Willpower, and I'm going to be training gunnery, missile launcher operation, and spatial command stuff for quite a while. And when your yearly, yearly cooldown is available, you can remap to something different and maybe, say, go to Intelligence and memory and work on those tanking skills that I was talking about a moment ago. Or maybe you'll dump a lot of it into charisma and then something else because you've decided you want to train a lot of stuff in the leadership category, like say, Warfare Link Specialist 4, uh, Siege Warfare Specialist uh, 5, Fleet Command 5, or whatnot. So normally you set, you use your remaps to uh, to optimize year-long skill training plans. Now, that brings us to the subject of the 2011 holiday Christmas gifts. So, if you log into account management, I'm not going to show you the entire account management process because that would involve showing you my account name and password. That would be a very bad thing. Never show your account name and password to anyone. All right, Not even people claiming to be CCP employees. Don't hand out your account name and password. But if you log into account management from uh, eveonline.com and you click on the stuff about holiday gifts, you'll see a bunch of options in here. Uh, a lot of this, is, a lot of these options are packages of in-game stuff that you can obtain by other means. I am the destroyer has various options where you can get three destroyers and a bunch of faction ammunition and a destroyer skill book. Outliers are for collectors' ships that were gifts from previous years. Uh, the core augmentation is a gift that ceased to be normally available. Uh, a couple of weeks before this video was put up on YouTube. Get Wired is for basic plus three attribute implants that you can easily get from loyalty point stores or off the market. Those are These are reproducible. Neural Surgery is the bonus attribute remap. This is the option I'm advocating for almost every single player in EVE Online. The Doctor's Bag is boosters. These are consumables that can be manufactured. Uh, most boosters are contraband in high security space. In the Heat of a Moment is a gift booster that is not normally available. Uh, fully fueled and purification prints have to do with fueling star bases, but you can obtain these in game anyway for ISK. Survival rations are just packages of faction ammunition. 
uh, Imperial Navy frequency crystals, cruiser and battleship size, uh, Republic fleet uh, projectile ammunition, cruiser and battleship size, and so on and so forth. Passion for fashion is you get 2000 Aurum, which is a specialty currency that can only be used in the Noble Exchange to... It, it, that's Crowd Control Productions microtransaction store. And you can buy suits, jackets, pants, shoes, monocles, whatnot for your avatar. Personally, I don't use Aurum at all. But if you want Aurum, you can always buy a Plex from Account Management and convert that into Aurum. So, every other option here, almost every other option here, uh, is either useless or can be obtained by other in-game means. So that leaves just the attribute remap. So if I advocate picking Neural Surgery, uh, I already did that on my main account. I haven't done it on my alt account yet, alt accounts yet. Uh, but I'm going to pick Attribute Remap on all of my accounts. And when you do that, what should happen is that it will increment your bonus remaps by one. That gives you one more remap to work with in case you suddenly decide that you need to change your skill training plan in the middle of a year. So hopefully this clears up the functionality of uh, Attributes, Remaps, and the 2011 holiday Christmas season gift choice. Uh, if you're watching this video well past 2011, the rest of this information should still be current. Hopefully. If it ceases being current, I'll pull down this video. In the meantime, thank you for watching.